Nintendo being the last company to cave in on Sony Dollar Games, with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom being priced on pre-orders for Sony Dollars. And, yeah, gaming, I think, is going to go into another gaming crash. I've been predicting this for, like, the past couple of years, and I think it's more and more likely we're heading into another gaming crash, okay? Uh, yes, I get it. If something is complete, if a game is good, then maybe it is deserving of the price, okay? But this is not an industry standard. Okay, and with the lack of quality control in games nowadays, just like the 1980s, okay, but the problem is, unlike the 1980s, most of the people are seep, okay, they don't care, okay, they don't give a shit, okay, and most of the smart people will always try to see the right on the wall, we're gonna force spoken, okay, a major PS5 exclusive, that was supposed to be a major game for the console, the first major true PS5 exclusive, Bombed. No one wants to buy it. Okay. I don't know how Hogwarts Legacy will do. Okay. But people used to just be, you know, kind of like in the movie industry. Like, if I see a sequel to a movie, I know if I like the first movie, like, sometimes you might get a disappointing movie. I can compare the modern day movie industry to the modern day gaming industry. Okay. You should have to be worried about the next titles that are coming out. Okay. The fact that they're charging seventy dollars for games, but we still have to worry and pray that our games are complete at once, that our games are finished at once. Okay, and I'm not buying any more games at once. They, if unless it's something completely important like Pikmin Four, okay, or something like Kirby, okay, because I don't think most games are worthy of seventy dollars. Okay, all we have to do is wait until games are out, where our last money, okay. For example, Cyberpunk, that came out in 2019, I really got it for like $20 a month afterwards. Okay, but unfortunately, because of Sony's greed, okay, and people say, oh no, it's not because of greed, they face it, it's all this other stuff. All these other factors, game development, blah, 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 blah. That was greed, okay. Ever since Xbox has been charging us for odd wide, and EA introduced the idea of microtransactions in AAA games, gaming has no longer been gaming anymore, okay? It's just, who are, who, how much we can nickel or dive you out of your money, okay? How much can we stand for modern gaming, okay? And I have really lost interest in gaming, okay? I really have, okay? Sometimes I do play games, but I only have a bunch of games I want to play. None of them came out this year, obviously. Not this year, last year. This year... None of the games so came out so far I want to play. But games of $70, not every game is going to be $70. Of course, any games will still be like $10 to $15. Smaller games like Remasters and Ports will still probably be like $50 and $60. And it's just Sony charging $70 for The Last of Us, which is, all, which is backwards compatible with the PS4 version of The of Last of Us on PS5. Okay? It's greed that is becoming the industry standard. Okay, the industry standard for video games is greed. Okay, we have to get the most recent free-to-play titles. Overwatch 2, okay. I do not, the reason why I stopped playing Xbox, I stopped paying for Xbox Live, because of Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 and Multiverses were some of the biggest disappointments of the year. Okay, and I want to play both. I was like, oh my god, they're making Overwatch 2. Okay, they made Overwatch worse, they added a battle pass. Because the Belgian government sued for EA because EA ruled root boxes. Okay, maybe just add, maybe could have added something like the Gotha games usually we do. Okay, where you get like awards for playing the for playing matches or something. But we don't want to do that. Either, of course, you know, as well. But instead, you have the same fucking system as Fortnite. Okay, you have characters locked behind literal paywalls, and people think this is okay. Okay, expecting people to buy them, is it? They're talking about over, like, I hear people talking about Overwatch, like, oh my god, I love Overwatch over, no. You're not playing the same game that I played when Overwatch 1 was around. This is a muddy, grubbing piece of garbage. That's like Fortnite, same thing on Fortnite, okay? Everybody's talking about, oh my god, Fortnite's so cool. You can play as Goku in Fortnite, oh yeah. 
you have to pay a lot of money to play Goku as Fortnite, okay? You have to pay a lot of money to play the Battle Pass to play Goku in Fortnite. You know, there's no other way to unlock it, you know? Can't unlock it for any normal means like Super Smash Bros. Imagine if you had to play Super Smash Bros. And you had to, instead of unlocking every character, you had to basically play so many matches in the game, or you had to pay. That's multiverses, okay? And we have to forget that there was microtransactions in every, every major online game. Okay, every game that isn't a single player game, you have to, they have to serve in Battle Pass or Microtransactions. And you want me to pay $70 for that stuff? Okay, Overwatch 2, they can maybe get away with it. Okay, it's free. But Halo Infinite, then, oh, right, Halo Infinite is also free. But something like Call of Duty, you have to pay $70 for fucking Call of Duty now, okay? And yes, I'm angry, that's what I'm saying, the effort. Okay, because you have to pay thirty dollars for Call of Duty, for fucking Call of Duty, for fucking the same game every year. Okay, they still have a battle pass, microtransactions, and pay to win strategies. Okay, modern gaming has been no longer. Let's make the best games possible. Okay, let's make the best games possible. Now modern gaming is let's some us let's. Try to make our games as expensive as possible and serve as money microtransactions and money grubbing schemes in your games. Okay? And Zelda is gonna be $70. The new Zelda. Okay? And people will still buy it. The sheep will still want buy it, of course. Because they're gonna want to get it at one, one day one. Okay? And it's not just. Nintendo, it's Xbox as well. It's really every major gaming company that is following in the footsteps of Sony because they know making games for your dollars, you know, you can get an extra ten dollars out of people. Okay, it's not about inflation, it's about taking your money. Okay, and yes, gaming has always been about buying new games. Okay, back in the day when I got DS games and GameCube games, they were like 40 to 40 dollars. Okay, and then 60 dollars became the industry standard. Around 2012, around the PS4 and Xbox One era, that was the industry standard. Now it's 30 dollars. Okay, that's the new industry standard. Okay, and the thing is, if a game is like Zelda, maybe you can get away from it because Zelda there's no microtransactions. There's no, they're not trying to grub you out of money. Okay, you know, but something like, you know, Call of Duty is not worth 30 dollars. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, where they try to money grub you with microtransactions all over the place. Okay, so a full price game, even a $60 game, so that'll be full of microtransactions like mobile games. Does it either be free or complete? Okay, no microtransactions, no pay to win bullshit in our games. Okay, it's, but again, the companies like EA, Activision, and Nintendo, not Nintendo, and of course, Sony, you know, all of them, all of the AAA developers, all of them, they know, hey, you know, we can try to take all the money. And some of the more controversial games like Middle Earth, Star War flopped because they focused too much on microtransactions. They tried to take out away, you know, they tried to, you know, scam people with these garbage games. But thankfully, a lot of these practices are out of big games, okay? Because of Fortnite. As much as they hate Fortnite, you can fake Fortnite that a lot of these money grubbing games are free to play now. Okay, like Multiverses. Overwatch 2. Okay. It's still a city system. Okay. But, you know, at least it isn't, you know, the way it used to be. But then, let's go into the elephant of doom. Glitzy and buggy games. Games that are incomplete at once. Games that lack content. Okay, a game that lacks content is buggy and is incomplete at once, so not, absolutely not, be $30. Pokemon Scarlet Violet, okay, it's not worth $30. Forspoken, not worth $70 at all, okay. Those two games are not worth $70, okay. This game is not worth $70, okay. And, uh, and... People say that it's going to kill the console industry. Oh wait, on Steam, the full price, four games at once, is the same on consoles. 
I bet the same thing at Epic Games Store as well. It is not just console gaming, it is PC gaming as well. And prices will go down eventually. Okay. Obviously. Okay. They can't keep games selling dollars forever. They had they you know as well. And I said Nintendo. Only Nintendo can get away with that somehow. But Dead Space and Forspoken are two games that we recently released and they're both thirty dollars. At least Dead Space the game is complete. Okay, the game is complete at once. Okay, the game is playable. The game is a full of bugs and glitches and microtransactions. But if we want, okay, if we if they if they really want games to be seventy dollars, they gotta really make the games worth seventy dollars. Okay, the state of the gaming industry is not right now. Not, and most of these games that came out last year, like Saints Row, okay, and for example, Battlefield, okay, Call of Duty. FIFA, Madden, you know, NBA, 2K, WWE, all these silly ass games that are complete garbage, but you seem to keep buying them anyways. Well, that is the problem. Okay, and uh, now the people will be buying them for $70 because they want to get the game at once. Okay, real games are probably to be a hobby for the wits and YouTubers. Okay, because YouTubers, they can just get review copies. Okay, us peasants and small channels. And, you know, not, not Ninja, not, you know, PewDiePie, who could probably get a review copy of this, you know, for example, for Spoken, relatively easily, because all they have to do is ask Sony to review it, and Sony will pay them to give the good game a good review, okay? Or they review the game, okay? They could get away with it, obviously. Big channels, many of them, over 100,000 to millions of subscribers, could get away with it, because they were not pe- they're not peasants like us. Okay, of course they don't give a set. They're not gonna talk about. It. They're not gonna say anything about it because they get review copies. They get the pass. Okay, they get the pass. Okay, they don't have to pay for games like us peasants do. Okay, they don't. They don't have to pay seventy dollars for the newest Pokemon, for the newest Zelda, for the next Bethesda game, for the next Call of Duty. Okay, I'm speaking for everybody. Okay, nobody. None of those people at the top have to pay. None of those journalists have to pay for the games. Because the developers will just give it for free as long as they give the game a good review. Okay. This is why modern gaming is dying. And I think modern gaming will eventually reach a point so low. Triple A games will reach a point so low. Same thing with consoles and PC gaming. Mean. PC gaming, I think, will be spelled like the original class did. But I think we're going to head into another video game class. You know... Charging games for seventy dollars now, nickel and dime consumers forcing us to pay for our and for I guess what all these so called free and play online games uh, on the console. Well, you're gonna have to pay sixty dollars a year in order to play with your friends. Okay, they're paywalling you, they're nickel and diving you. Okay, and they're forcing microtransactions on top of you paying sixty dollars for online for PS4 and Xbox One and. The only company that is standing against this is unfortunately the company that made Fortnite, Epic Games. Basically saying that, hey, you don't have to play online. You don't have to go through a paywall to play the new game. You shouldn't have to play a paywall to play online. Okay, first of all, you already have, especially if you're by yourself, you already have to pay the internet companies money too to play. Your games are wide. And then on top of that, you have to pay Nintendo at most $20. And Sony and Microsoft, $60 if you want to play games on wide. And I think we're going to see another gaming crash with the console gaming industry. Because they really are trying to run themselves to the ground. Okay? Trying to force digital, all digital garbage on us. Okay? The post-human car- video game console. Both both did so as well as the, the disc console. Okay? But... If the charging seventy dollars for such garbage like Forspoken, I don't have much faith for the gaming industry. Okay, the in, the gaming the industry standard is gonna kill gaming in my opinion. Okay, the yes the PS Five and the Xbox Series X are selling so well right now, but if the, if gaming continues the way it does, it's gonna crash. Okay, I have already watched my my interest in gaming. Yes, I play games like Sonic Frontiers and stuff. And Pac Man and Mario Odyssey very recently, and played Bioshock pretty recently. But I don't want, really, and of course, FIFA PDR Total and Paradise. 
But I watched a lot of interest in being the new games, okay? If all the new games would be thirty dollars, okay? I don't really have much interest. And Nintendo is not gonna save us like last video game crafts. Okay. And I think once the gaming industry crashes again, we're going to see the same thing happen with modern games. Okay? And let's compare modern gaming to the modern movie industry. I know a lot of people love to rag on modern movies for being those massive brat spectacle shows. Okay? But a lot of people still like that stuff. Jurassic, you know, for example, Marvel fans, if they like every Marvel movie, v, don't have to worry about the movie being a disappointment. Don't like Ant-Man fans, if they like the first two movies, they don't have to go to sleep knowing that Ant-Man 3 will be a terrible movie. Because they're going to enjoy it anyways. Same thing with Mario fans. I think a lot of Mario fans are going to love the Mario movie. Sonic fans don't have to get sleep at night knowing Sonic 3 is likely in good hands, okay? And yes, when it comes to the video game industry, the movie industry does have its disappointments. Does have its failures and flops, but the movie industry is starting to recover from the pandemic. Meanwhile, the gaming industry, they had a boom during the pandemic, but now the video game industry is in decline, okay? Because the gaming industry is screwing itself over with all these microtransactions, okay, and stuff, okay? Yes, people are talking about the new Harry Potter game, okay, but not for long, because people are not going, a lot of people are not going to want to pay seventy dollars to play a Harry Potter game. Okay, it will sell pretty well, but it won't sell as well as games used to anymore. Okay, gaming is a dying industry. Okay, outside of course, I'm talking about gaming, I'm talking about the AAA industry. Okay, AAA games. Indie games, of course, obviously are thriving. You know, indie games, small, de- small game developers, you know, they're gonna be, they are thriving. Okay, for example, you know, a lot of people are excited for a lot of, you know, a lot of people love indie games now. For example, some of the most successful games in the past decade were indie games. Okay, and, and, and as the AAA game industry dies, I think indie games are going to become more popular. I don't really care for indie games all too much as well, but if the gaming industry continues the way it does, I think indie gaming, you know, I think there's going to be a resurgence in popularity for retro games, which good work on that because we have done a very terrible job of preserving retro games. And indie games, and other need, and more these cut games, and of course buy games on sale. Obviously, you know when they're on sale. Of course, not everything is gonna be the same price forever. Game companies do offer sales every once in a while, especially the games that cannot sell, like Anthem being offered for a dollar, a literal dollar. Okay, but yeah, everything I said about the bar gaming industry. Again, Zelda. I don't think people get Zelda fans have to worry. About Zelda Heal to the KMP completes fast. Okay? Zelda is not the problem. It's everyone else. Literally. Okay? God of War fans will probably have to have a, have a massive sigh of relief that they that those seventy dollars are not wasted getting God of War. Okay? But as the, as game, as most games come out mediocre, unfair, buggy, or be full of microtransactions, I think we need to continue to hold these developers accountable for making broken, busy, and unfair games. Okay, like for example, Cyberpunk. The game was a developer for 10 years. What were they even making? Okay, what were they making? Okay, were they even developing the game at all? Okay, we need to hold these lazy developers to, sta- to the standard and make sure the games are glitchless and bugless. Okay, and the games run per- good on the consoles and PC. Okay, we should be able to hold gaming, the de- AAA developers, Accountable before it's too late. As well. So that's basically for this video. Goodbye.